all right you might already um, have been either uh, familiar with this type of concepts as you see the market creating uh, candles of this such in this market but it might not know how it means of this such but it might not know how it means so today we are going to be talking about market inefficiency and market efficiency right so um, the other names for market inefficiency and the market inefficiency is also imbalance market imbalance or imbalance right um, balanced or imbalanced okay that is basically what it means so it has uh, a lot of names we have FVG fair value gap also so we can call this particular area as fair value gap um, as explained by um, the big mentors which is um, ICT and other concepts that has actually named this in a different way right for better understanding of their clients so what is a fair value gap? A fair value gap is basically where price um, creates a gap right to potentially come back in the future to tap into and go back to its potential direction break in the highs and continue its market direction so it is a type of order flow that basically allows uh, the markets to leave a gap okay um whether when, when there are a lot of um when there are a lot of uh, positions entered into the market the market has to practically give its, uh, itself like i mean some pressure to push to the upside leaving a lot of gaps that it might not be able to fill early then goes up come back into the future to fill to give we the retail traders an opportunity to take this opportunity back to its original direction if we are able to recognize this type of potentials so um let's look at this particular place um and a fair value gap is basically an area where market has not uh, the wicks of each price structure has not been filled right so assuming we have this particular price structure we have um, structure one uh, candle one candle two and then candle three so basically what this actually um, behaves is that the candles is supposed the candle wick is supposed to basically fill the middle candle in a sense that there is no gap in between hence the market has no reason to um, practically come back to that particular end to practically take liquidity or any sort before pushing back to the upside so in this uh i mean filling in a gap before it pushes so in this particular scenario you can see i also have the um, efficiency um sorry i think i have uh just switch this this is supposed to be inefficiency right so this is the inefficiency and this is the efficiency so it has been switched um sorry for that so now um market efficiency is basically uh, a potential place where price has at actually filled so there is no particular momentum in that particular area hence you shouldn't be looking for price to return to those areas yes price that doing price doesn't return to those areas basically but what it does mean is that price has no left um, gaps to be filled because it probably has filled all the gaps on its way when it was going to the upside hence when price reaches it basically just taps into the imbal imbalance which is um, the inefficiency before it continues to the upside so that's basically that basically happens to every particular trend right so now uh, as you can see on the price structure we have a bearish um, inefficiency and we have a bullish inefficiency I have just combined the candles to make it very simple so that you don't get uh, confused so you can see all of it in the same particular price structure as you can see price basically creates um, some uh, at some point price fills the gap and at some point price lifts the gap to potentially come back in the future to tap and continue it is a type of order flow as i mentioned in the um first notes uh, in the first one when i immediately started this um recording so when, and also we have the bearish inefficiency don't mind how it has been um uh, i mean designed but look at the concept i'm going to speak about you know in a lot of uh, in 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 some basic market when there's a lot of pressure on you let's say um, you are selling you are sell, selling a cosmetic shop and there's a lot of pressure on you and then let's say you are uploading some things and other things and you're trying to look for other things you pick what is already um, closer to you and then you search for the rest uh, so you 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 leave what's already closer to you and search for what is not closer to you so let's say um, uh, you are you are having uh, or let's let's just take minerals for instance there are a lot of drinks inside the fridge and you are trying to reach for one you have to um, be sure that the other ones are there so let's say we have two particular areas let's say you have the first deck second deck and third deck you open the further you open the fridge you are you are standing you see the first deck you leave this one knowing it is already pre present and then you start searching for the other one to see if it is also present 
then you come down looking for it before you now gather all of it put it inside your basket and practically move it right so that's basically just a simple and simple explanation i'm going to try to use but in the forest market so what practically happens is that the big bands has a lot of um what do you call it uh, they have a lot of uh money that they basically trade hence when they put monies into their uh into a trade practically a position um price pushes higher because that money is able to manipulate the market into pushing it and leaving uh practically others uh, other orders which is already um left behind probably limit orders that are already here so it pushes the market away anytime they are placing trees you see price pushing to the upside creating higher highs and higher lows after the market has relaxed the moment they start closing their trees you start to see a slow momentum into the market but the moment they start adding more push, 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 start to start to come back to fill in the rest and go back to the upside so that is the composite man and his structural behaviors so the market inefficiency as explained it can be called imbalance can be called in uh, fbg which is a fair value gap the full meaning of fbg so others call it names that they think they can be able to recognize very easily but i would say inefficiency and efficiency is the simplest way basically i use or imbalance is only always the simplest way you can always use you can use anything that can basically um, describe what you mean in that particular situation right here so now you know what an imbalance it and you know uh, what an uh, what a balance situation is so now we have let's look at practical examples so when you come to this particular situation here you can see with this candle we have a lot of imbalance created at this point right you can see this candle is created with a lot of imbalance we have an imbalance here and you have an imbalance here Hence, this place becomes an imbalance or a fair value gap. You have an imbalance within these areas. So, now look at this whole place is the imbalance. This whole place is the imbalance. Now, you have other Im other areas that have been filled already. So, you have this imbalance too was filled by this particular area. Um, let's pick. Blue. So it was filled by this particular area and this one too was filled this one too is not filled yet. but we are now waiting for price to fill these areas for us hence we are i um, practically had a, had a chart being reversed so that i can show you let's climb back to the upside all right mm, price is pretty much slower than i thought okay so we have price practically filling back. You see, price was shooting to the downside, break a lot of lows, practically switching. Um, should I say bearish, right? That's switching bearish as we all can see. Break of structure and had to have another break of structure from here. So it practically switched bearish, right? But because it has already left gaps in the market, it has to come back and fill those gaps. To make sure it doesn't leave anything so when price goes up it comes up to fill gaps into the market so we have a lot of areas where price hasn't filled so you see price left the gap came back and filled that particular gap um, let's take this came back and filled this particular gap you see this gap too was left so potentially prices come back to fill it as well just wait let's push price to the upside and see so price filled this gap continue to its um, potential direction that's to the upside right uh okay i don't know why this is practically stopping but yeah so basically price has to fill those all these areas and let's let's cut it back again let me see which year we are in 2018 24th january so let's let's start it again 2018 24th january let's go to the weekly so that we can be able to get those type of areas so practically we will have this all over and over again right so it basically doesn't matter uh when it is how it is done but what you need to know is that price would always return to is i think 20th 28th of this right okay so let's close this and go to the one now all right so this is what basically happens we have all this right here why is it not always continue when i go 
I don't want to make this video too long. Okay, let's let me just use normal. So I'm going to cut it from there. Okay, send me to. 2018 August 20th. Go to let's see if it takes us to that place. All right, all right. Oh, okay, okay. So it created a huge gap, right? Price created a huge gap from here. I think that was the reason why it hasn't practically uh, given us that. So after this, right? So you might not see this. All right, so now we have this particular thing going on now let me take the pictures of this before we continue so now you have you have an idea of what i was actually explaining about uh let's have download and see it as png okay so um let's let's look at other areas i think with this gap yes price will definitely feel it anywhere that price has created gaps right it definitely feels it let's put a line here and when you come you reach that line you see that price has price has filled that line you can see this is the line let me uh, make it bigger for you to see make it big one all right and make it uh, something like yellowish okay so when you check when you check in the previous data price will basically fill it let me where is Okay, the replay mode is not working, but let's let's get it done. Okay, so you can see price has already filled it years ago. You can see price has already come back and filled it years ago. So you can see the now that price has crossed it upside, price has filled it years ago, and every imbalance inside the market will get filled as time goes on. So you see practically um, this price, a recent price action, we had imbalance here. Price filled it. You see after filling, you see the rejection it made, shot to the upside, and then practically came back. And after it filled and finished, there is no imbalance here for it to fill again. So price continued back to the upside, creating other imbalance to us as well. You see, we have this imbalance. We have this imbalance. So price is practically going to fill every single imbalance as time goes on. So you can see this imbalance was filled by this one before it continued push down. No imbalance to fill. It continued to the upside. So price follows imbalances to fill a particular structure. So basically when you go to the weekly time frame you see more of these imbalances more than you can practically expect right let's clear all this so you can see this imbalance oh, there was a lot of imbalance on this when we go to the monthly time frame right when we go to the monthly time frame, let's go to the one month when we go to the monthly time frame, you can see all this this whole place was a very big imbalance right it was a very big imbalance and price came back feel that particular imbalance and after feeling what happened you can see price has just continued the trend to the downside after feeling it and now this imbalance is left hence price is trying to go back feel this imbalance and continue down or maybe it's going to feel this and then go back crap there's no much imbalance on this area it's just so far so price is just going to feel the current price action continue to the downside that is basically what i'm seeing on this particular structure so you can see there's other imbalances around here Price will eventually fill it out as time goes on. Structure is structure and price will always do it. You shall see price has filled this imbalance. And after filling this imbalance, price has seen there's no much imbalance on this particular structure here. That's why price continued to downside. Filling this particular imbalance and now went up. This imbalance was they filled everything, came down, and it's now going back to fill. So price will, will always fill imbalance. So you can see the, this imbalance was not filled by these two candles. You can see this candles hasn't met. So price tried it best, went back and filled this all this imbalance. So you can see price has filled the imbalance and there is nothing left again. So that's why price continued to the downside, then started shooting to the downside where, um, um, practically. And you can also see uh, past data around 2006, price also created this particular imbalance here. So, and it was filled eventually by this strong move to the downside. And yeah, so that is basically how it works, right? The imbalance is always supposed to be filled. Now you can see there is no imbalance on this one. Uh, other places too, there's no imbalance. There's no imbalance. So anywhere there's no imbalance, price is not necessarily going to go back to that area. When it goes to reaches that area, practically it has filled a previous imbalance before it has continued to the upside. So I um, hope you all understand what I'm talking about when it comes to imbalance and then um, 
balanced price structures and how it works so in the next episode i will be going through combining imbalance order blocks and then price structure to tell you how you can enter introducing this particular price structure so see you guys in my next episode